So this video, I'm going to review what books you need to buy to be a watch repair guy. This is not a video on how to do Travis picking to play Dust in the Wind, although that'd be a pretty cool video too. So starting out, if you're going to watch repair, or do watch repair, or do horology work, you need information. So you need to buy some books. So what are these books you need to buy? So I think I'll move my hands a lot in this video, so I'll keep you guys awake. Just move my hands a lot, move my hands a lot. So kind of like a politician. So, so I've got a lot of books. I'm going to go through them. Which books that I have are good, um, and which books I had that are not bad, but not that essential, but I bought them anyway. Probably should resell them, but I've got a little bit of a library of books here. So first book is the Handbook of Watch and Clock Repairs. So this book is by H.G. Harris. So never knew the guy personally, but I'm sure he was a great guy. This book was obviously stolen from the um, public library in Sterling, Massachusetts, as it says. And then some guy on eBay sold it, but I suspect the public library didn't really need to hold this book on watch repair. So this is actually not a bad book. It goes through some of the basics of cleaning. It goes through the watch movement. Um, it deals with watches, um, as you can see, a breakdown. Um, it also has the information on pocket watches and cleaning watches, pocket watches. Mainly it's watches though. So it has all the good basics. Uh, a few good things that had that had it in this book where if you got a mainspring and you got to put a new hook on it, it had some good information on how to do that. And it also, as you can see here, and it also has some good information on what was it on replacing a tooth. And that's not your tooth. That's not work your dentist can typically do to replace a tooth um, because these are watch teeth. Anyway, good information on how to replace a watch tooth on a gear. Um, so one to the mainspring barrel or any of the other gears. Uh, very good book. Not bad, but I, to be honest, I read it and I said, okay, I can probably get this information somewhere else in another book. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to do my hands a lot. Okay, there we go. My hands are now moving. So there you go. So that's book number one. So the second book I have here is called The Watch Repairs Instructor. Uh, this isn't bad. There's some gems here and there. I thought it was pretty good. It was by F. W. Uh, Brighton. F. W. Brighton. Um, and this is an old book. I think it's from 44 or something, 1944. Uh, it is actually from 1944. It seems like all watch repair books are from 1944. I'm not sure what happened in 1944. It was just before the war ended. Anyway, so. <laughs> this book has got some pretty cool information. It also has this this uh, uprighting tool if you're ever interested in finding out what the heck an uprighting tool is. Or if you're sitting down and you need to be upright, then you buy that tool. So I'm just trying to add some really bad humor in this video. But it's got a lot of, lot of information on tools, mainly tools. Some information on, um, on the watch movement, how to disassemble it, stuff like that. So good little book, good little read. Not ne not really essential. Going to stay in the library in the drawer. Someday when you when you kick the bucket, your kids will go. Geez, I wonder why Dad bought that. Anyway, so maybe he was bored and was searching eBay. <clears throat> anyway, next book: Horological Hints and Helps. So this is by this F. W. Brighton again. Another book by him. So this is a better book. So he's got this has got boatloads of information in it and. I'd say it's got it covers specific topics as well and like the mainspring it has a whole lot of information about the mainspring that repair books typically wouldn't have they'd have information on how to repair the mainspring and other things but um, key winding watches it has a whole section on key winding watches which is unusual I haven't seen this the fuse watch um, so this book is I'd recommend this book maybe if you can find it somewhere and um, it's it's pretty decent. Um, it's got a lot of data in it that you might not find in other books. Uh, it's you know it's got information on how to how to repair a clock as well. Um, someone told me that if you go in the clock repair, you better not like your fingers. So they said because if a mainspring on a clock goes kaboom or pating, um, there's a chance of losing a finger. There we go. That's a fake losing a finger or the other way to do it is like like this. See, this is a losing a finger. There. Great little trick for kids. Anyway, that's my magic for today. So, 
<clears throat> this book here is Rules and Practices for Adjusting Watches. So this is a cute, a cute little book, but super detailed on how to adjust watches and how to uh, how to deal with me. Uh, uh, basically, you're dealing with the hairspring in a watch and um, variations in hairspring and relative running points of a hairspring and all different types of stuff on hairspring. So if you can get a hold of this, uh, this is adjustment to uh, isochrom isochronism and positions, right? I'll probably say some of this stuff wrong. I'm an engineer, but I can't read. Anyway, so <clears throat> this is a very good little book. Uh, I found it very useful. Um, the Compensating Balance and Controlling Factors. Uh, very detailed, a lot of theory. If you're a math guy, then that's good. Very scientific. It, it'll help you if you're really getting into adjusting watches and trying to get down to plus or minus five seconds a day. Rules and Practices for Adjusting Watches. And the author is... Walter J. Kleinlin, K-L-E-I-N-L-E-I-N. -E 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 so you know what the rule was, I before E, except after this name. Doesn't make any sense. Probably German. <coughs> this book here is the Watch and Clockmaker's Handbook. So this is like a reference book. So I'm an electrical engineer and they had the Electrical Engineer's Handbook, which was massive. So if you wanted to know how many gigawatts it actually took to get Marty to go fast enough to go back in time then the engineer's handbook will tell you how many gigawatts and it's 1000 gigawatts Marty it's, that's I think it was one thousand maybe it was more than a thousand gigawatts 1.2 gigawatts Marty something like that I don't want to do his impersonation again this particular book is very good so this is, I would say you buy this because if you have a tool and you don't know how to use it, this will tell you if there's a technique that you're not sure of um, on how to actually apply that technique to watchmaking, this will tell you. If there's something about oiling you don't know, this will tell you. Uh, effectively, it'll tell you everything. So this is your reference book for a horologist or the watch and clock maker's handbook. So very good. This is by Britain, again, or Brighton another Brighton book this guy's written a lot of books I seem to have them all on the top so so this next book is called the pocket watch I make a mess down here so you see if that will that will uh, thing so this is the pocket watch restoration maintenance and repair so this is very specific about pocket watches and it's got a lot of photos which is kind of neat because if you're into dismantling plates for example or removing balance assemblies or it's got fusee information on it as well, but it actually has has pictures of the pocket watch and a lot of very good hints on how to deal with pocket watch problems. So I do a lot of work on pocket watches. I have a lot of I have a lot of old pocket watches. Um, I've got 90 some pocket watches I've restored. Um, here's a nice little Henry Peck pocket watch that I worked on. Uh, this is a nice key wine, key wine or key key wine pocket watch, uh, and I've got. I just had it sitting here for some reason, I don't know why, but also have some old watches like this one here, which is an Elgin that I got running again, and wind that baby, and it was not running, and I had to make a balance staff for it. Sounds like it's got a mouse in it or something. <laughs> it was weird. It's ticking away now, so as you can as you can see, it's ticking away. So, so anyway, which proves I can actually fix a watch. So then I've got this book from George Daniels. So I read George Daniels, well I'm not, I didn't completely read it, I'm kind of reading it on plane flights. So George Daniels, British fellow, brilliant, just brilliant, was I think the first person to ever make a complete watch from the beginning to the end. And that's the case, the movement, the crowns, everything, right? So this guy manufactured this watch and he had only one person that ever mentored under him and this guy lives on some island and runs a watchmaking company I can't remember his name but anyway this is a very very good book on watchmaking so this is the the George Daniels Bible on watchmaking it's pretty complex for most people because it'll tell you all about cutting gears and this is wheel cutters and and it'll it'll describe all kinds of information about this this here is actually collets tools for moving collets so it's got turning which is effectively uh, um, making uh, stuff on your watchmaker's lathe it's got 
what is this slotting screw heads uh, everything so this is again like a Bible um, and it's from George Daniels so you gotta you gotta know that this thing is absolutely complete so I bought this just because George Daniels wrote it it's called George Daniels watchmaking so I highly recommend this book so this is in the pile of highly recommended so remember this George Daniels watchmaking um, I bought this I won't get in the lays yet but this is practical bench work for horologists practical bench work for horologists this book is looks like it's got a lot of notes in the front part of this and I bought this off the internet and it has whoever owned it before took a yellow pen and said oh I want to highlight certain things that are important to me like cutting opinion um, it's got a mix of photos and diagrams in it uh, I'd say it's an excellent book it had this cool section on pivot polishers I bought a pivot polisher and I was wondering how to use it on uh, to polish the uh, the uh, balance staff pivots and it gave me some really cool pictures on how to set it up and how to actually uh, attack the pivot from the various angles you need to attack it from and depending on the conic shape of the pivot and everything else so this has some good stuff and the wigwag uh, this is the only book I found that told you how to make a wigwag which is actually used for polishing pivots too with the uh, it uses effectively uses this u-shaped metal uh, to actually uh, rub against the pivot with certain uh, uh, not chemicals but powders to actually help wear that out it's got information on the jcot tool and how to use a jcot tool and drilling so there's some very specific stuff in there and it's called the practical bench work for horologists and this book is by I should tell you Lewis Levine and Samuel Levine so Lewis Lois maybe L-O-U-I-S Lois and Samuel Levine so beautiful book well made really nice I had to fix the bindings on it when I bought it because they were all worn out but uh, I would recommend this book because it's got some gems in there that you're not going to find in any other book so highly recommended book on, on watchmaking now, this book here is on practical watch repair by Donald DeCarl and all the DeCarl books are excellent so this is practical watch Rep repair by DeCarl and the cool thing about this book is that it gives you it, it, basically the illustrations are drawn and they're very detailed um, but you know little angles like the hand is here for actually polishing so it shows you the position of the hand for doing things polishing pivots this is again pivot making and, uh, and uh, balance staff making actually and how to finalize the pivot on it and it actually shows you how to do that in a jcot tool and so there's plenty of really good illustrations here um, and it's showing you basically everything on watchmaking timing positions and how to time to positions it's got really good a really good section on on how to deal with hairsprings right forming an overcoil and how do you actually do that uh, with a watch uh, and dealing with uh, hairsprings and actually how you mount the hairspring on a hairspring holder holder with a collet and and then of course uh, stuff on gears, stuff on this one actually has information on on winding mainsprings. It also has some information on repairing the back end of mainsprings. So it shows you ex how to actually take that mainspring and turn it into a hook. So inside the barrel, if that comes out, and how you heat it and everything else. And again, where your hand is. That's the kind of the cool thing about this book is it shows you the hand positions, how to use a staking set to do various things to take off uh, roller tables and other things but again there's the hand position so this is the value behind this book is actually he's showing you how to hold things to do that technique where a lot of books will just write about it and you're wondering well how do I actually hold this thing to to do this repair technique so excellent book um, highly recommended practical watch repairing by Donald DeCarl I think I'll read this book again it's a brilliant book worth reading a, a second time to see if I need to use any of that information then I have um, the book called Bench Practices for Watch Repairs. This book here is actually an excellent book as well. Let's see if I can show that in the camera a little bit better. This is by this guy named Fry Fred Fried F R I E D so H B Fried and I don't know, I think it's Fried I before E except after G so he's going to be American. The German guys are F E I and here it's A I before E. So this this book has got some specifics that you're not going to find anywhere like like uh, some pivot work that you're not going to find anywhere uh, it's got it's got some specifics about 
jewel settings and bushings that you're not going to find anywhere. Um, I got this just because it had these things. In any, I haven't seen in any book um, this tool here. So these, this here tool. I bought a set of these, and I was saying, okay, what are these things for? So these are disc countersinks, right? And they're used to actually, uh, they're used to countersink the bevel of a jewel setting. So I couldn't find it anywhere. And this this book is this section is on uprighting um, and making jewel plate settings is in here. So this is a very very good book, very detailed. Another book I'd say is highly recommended by H. B. Fried. Um, maybe it's pronounced Fred, but if you look at that, it's got all of selecting a hairspring, colliding a hairspring. So it's got a whole section on hairspring colliding, which is really useful. Um, it tells you how to select a hairspring. You know you hold the hairspring here and if the balance goes down half an inch it's probably the right strength. Um, that's cool stuff that I didn't know before and how to apply the collet on the hairspring and then it tells you exactly how to make the different types of uh, hairsprings flat or overcoiled or whatever. So a little hints on how to call it that hairspring and finish it off. So I thought this is a very 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 good book. So if you can get a hold of this one, I think you can on eBay, but Bench Practices for Watch Repairs. I don't think there's a PDF version of this anywhere, but this this is a very, very good book. The This book here, again, by Donald DeCarl is called Complicated Watches and Their Repair. So very good book again. But this is specifically if you're dealing with watches like automatic watches, like self-winding watches, um, and, and watches that have calendar uh, complications in them. Um, like the Omega watch, the Movado, Longis watches. Um, this is, a, if you're getting into watches and, and not pocket watches, this book is good because it'll show you how to disassemble some of this stuff and how to deal with some problems that, that you might have uh, actually repairing a complicated watch. So as complicated as, as I've gotten, I've only done a couple of chronographs, uh, repaired a couple of chronographs for friends, um, and it's a it's a hard job that's why it typically costs a lot of money to repair a chronograph so this is a good book another de carl book which is highly recommended he writes great books so that's that book and then we've got uh we've got that one yet this book here is i would say the bible on practical watch adjusting another de carl book uh, again highly recommended and if i look inside there it's showing you how to deal with the balance cock, the balance, the hair springs, um, how to do timing in different positions. Um, it's got all the charts here as well. Uh, it's got how to how to form coils, over coils, how to call it, how to how to adjust the the pins, the regulator pins in the watch. Uh, yeah, it says bending the balance spring down at the at the stud. Uh, you know, just how to adjust the watch properly. Um, and this is if you're into the hairsprings. Plus, it's got there's a vibrating tool. So right there, I actually have this vibrating tool. I should reach back and show you the vibrating tool if you're interested. Um, maybe I should do that right now. So anyway, this is a very good book uh, on practical watch adjusting. I won't get into the vibrating tool. I think I showed you that in another video. So this is another DeCarl book, Donald DeCarl book, excellent book. So the basic Bible on watch repair is this one here by this fried guy Henry Fried. So if you're starting watch watchmaking watch repair um, and it, it goes into it goes as deep in, into uh, making a balance staff as, as you need. So if you're going to make a balance staff, this will show you how. It doesn't go into details on lathe work, but it gives you just enough to be able to cut a balance staff without a problem. Um, I use this as well. It also shows you a lot of information on how to use a staking set to do things like uh, if you're if you're going to tighten the cannon pinion, for example, on a watch. This will show you how to tighten the cannon pinion on a watch. Um, it'll show you how to how to tinker with you know the causes of overbanking, for example, that are all in here. Like what ha what causes overbanking and how do you how do I fix that? And you can see the staking set here and and dealing with the, the uh, pin here, or the whatever it's called, the uh, finger. Yeah, stretching a guard finger. So it's got information on that. Uh, so this book here, um, I'd say if you're going to buy, there's the section on cutting a balance staff. Well, here they're actually annealing 
uh, annealing the balance staff uh, on the end. So it actually deals with annealing metal. So if you're using blued steel to cut a balance staff, this will tell you how to anneal stuff. It also tells you how to make stems, uh, watch stems and stuff like that, cleaning machines, crowns, how to do crown work, how to case a watch properly. Um, I should probably not look down all the time when I'm talking on a video, right? So this is a pretty uh, pretty comprehensive book. So <clears throat> I, my, my opinion is if you buy any book, any single book on watchmaking, this is the one because this will teach you how to use, the, I think the JCOT tool is in here. Uh, for for uh, burnishing pivots, uh, the definitely use of staking sets is in here. Uh, it goes through how to fix a mainspring barrel hook. Um, you name it, it's in here. And whenever I've got to do something that's detailed and I kind of forget how to start the thing, I usually crack this book open and look at it. In fact, I like this book so much, the Watch Repairs Manual. I found another version of it, just in case, and I found another old version of this book um, like how to make a watch stem it's the exact same book but this is like an old an old beat up version of it and I figured if I travel and I need to bring this book with me I don't want to lose my really nice version of this book so I bought this old crappy version of it uh, it's still in great condition but it's got all the same information in it uh, it's kind of my backup for my Bible so this is very good now if you're getting in the lathe work, let me go into some lathe stuff. Um, I bought this book here called The Watchmakers and Model Engineers Lathe, and it gave me some pretty good details on how to set up. It's got information on lathes, like a lot of information on different types of lathes. I've got about 10 lathes, 10 watchmakers lathes, and half of them are on Burrell stands, and the other half aren't, and I've reconditioned a lot of them, and they're all ready to, ready to use. Um, and this gave me this whole section chapter 10 is laves of the world and it's almost half half the book excuse me um and then it goes into some details and your basics on how to use a lathe and again how to cut a balance staff and stuff like that but this book is really about the lathe not about how to use a lathe so it's about the watchmakers lathe watchmakers and model engineers lathe i'm an engineer but i'm not a model engineer i'm an electrical engineer so Anyway, this is a good book if you're interested in lays and just the history and what all these different lays are and you want to collect lays or whatever, you probably buy this book. So, then I've got this book called Wheel and Pinion Cutting in Horology. So this is, a, is also a very good book and it's by uh, Malcolm Wilde. So, um, and again, this book is, if you're going to get into some pretty detailed gear cutting, um, which I'm not into right now because I had to buy a whole new set of tools to cut gears uh, like to cut wheels basically right um, and I don't want to get into that now that's a, a huge investment in time and machinery to actually do that so maybe someday when I retire I'll get into that because I'll have more time to do that but right now no but this is a good book if you want to get into that and I saw it online I thought yeah what the heck I might as well buy it just add to the books, sneak it in the back door so my wife can't see, and we're good. I just sneak it in with my guitars. There's my guitar back there. So sneak it in with that. <laughs> so see what happens there. Um, and then I've got this book here called The Watchmaker's Lays. This is also a very good book, and it covers the basics again on, on lays and how to use them. This has got some very good detail on, on the different types of cutters um, and slides. Uh, it also has a whole set on chucks cement chucks and cement chuck works and that stuff it goes through four jaw chucks it got some stuff on the universal fa face plate um it has this this is a universal head i actually have one of these which is kind of crazy but the whole thing comes together with a face a face plate the universal face plate and the head and it's all in one and it comes it's basically a ww stock lathe so if you have a, a bowley lathe or whatever ww you can have one of these but i have one of these these are universal things and I also have the faceplate so because I was into trying to get the best faceplate thing I could find for a while so I bought a bunch of those so this is a good book The Watchmaker's Lathe by Ward Goodrich Ward Goodrich so that's that now the Bible in lathe work my belief is the modern watchmaker's lathe and how to use it let me see if I can focus that camera there we go so the modern modern watchmaker's lathe and how to use it and it's by Archie B. Perkins. Archie B. Perkins. It's a pretty hefty book. 
it's got a lot of pages it's a very well done book so this book starts off well it's acknowledgments to start off with but so if you look at the table of contents quickly I'll go through this it goes through lathe and its construction tail stock tail stocks and their attachments split wire chucks wheel chucks crown chucks jewel chucks cement brasses other chucks special chucks hand rests attachments slide rests pivot polishers gear cutting lathe maintenance and care gravers measuring basic cuts thread cutting making pivots balance staffs and pallet arbors making winding stems setting bezels repivoting pinions using slide rests making wheel and pinion cutters indexing making and mounting wheels uh, saws and sawing files and filing um, so those are the various sections a whole whack of tables and if you look at the thing it's really well written and positioned so or basically the graphics are excellent on this thing so this is uh, actually how to make uh, how to repivot the, the uh, wheels so this is a whole second uh, section on pivoting so this is drilling the hole tempering the pinion for you know if you need to temper the pinion to, lo to loosen up the metal so you can actually drill the hole this tells you how to do it it looks at the, the pivoting lathe one of these just one of these babies so hopefully you can see that um, and how to actually use that and how to install it on your lathe as well um, and it goes if you go back to the beginning here it's got photographs it shows you how to sharpen your gravers so if you want to know how to sharpen your lathe gravers it shows you the techniques of sharpening your gravers along with the tools needed to sharpen the graver um, I should probably have a different cam camera angle here and again it has a whole section on how to cut bounce staffs um, and then if you go to the beginning of this thing it's got stuff on cleaning lathes it tells you exactly how to disassemble how to disassemble the bearings and the lathes, um, uh, replacing the housing bearing, uh, all kinds of cool stuff on how to do maintenance on your lathe. Um, and then it goes into what do we have here? Hand rests and its attachments. Basically, this is the Bible on lathes. And the beginning of this thing, I believe, you had different types of tailstocks. It goes through all the different lathes in the beginning of it. So you can see what the, the Paulson lathe looks like, the, Mo the Mosley lathe, the old original one. Uh, the Schmidt Lorch Schmidt standard watchmaking lathe, um, just everything, right? So this is what is this type of lathe? That's a Mosley lathe there. So I think I have one of these puppy dogs. So this book, I would say, is the Bible on lathes. I don't think for watchmaking, I don't think there's much more information that you need uh, other than this book. Or if you're going to go into like I said before, if you're going to go into actually making uh, wheels and, and uh, pinions and stuff like that, then you need this book here. So these two books will cover pretty much everything. I bought these other books that, uh, like the Watchmaker's Lathe, uh, that was you know very interesting, but don't really need it. So that was probably a waste of money. Um, the other thing I have is a little tiny pamphlet I bought from a guy named Porter. Um, a man named Porter. So, I'm sure I'm fogging out here. Eh? Anyway, so this guy's name is Porter, Robert Porter, and and he made a book on how to disassemble and clean, clean a lathe, so restoring an old lathe. And actually, it's just basically probably made it out of Word and then printed it and away you go. So, it's got a nice little cover on it. Uh, it didn't probably cost me 12 bucks, I think, on eBay. Um, and it's a good little buy. So, it's uh, Robert Porter, and it's a good book. So the other book I want to show you here, I got, I got a bunch of catalogs and stuff like that, but what I did was I went on uh, online and I, f I looked for this book, 20th Century Catalog of Supplies for Watchmakers, Jewelers, and Kindred Trades. So a kindred trade. So what's a kindred trade, anyway, other than a watchmaker or a jeweler? And what this book has, right, if this will focus a bit, is every tool that you need for watchmaking like it's got a whole thing on staking sets in fact the pivot polisher i bought is in this book i just happened to open it to this page this thing here is the pivot polisher i ended up buying and it had the pivot polisher set up and i looked at it and i said oh i can buy these components of the pivot polisher as well all the different types of uh lathe attachments the different chucks that you need um, and there's there's a whole section on counter shafts that I, that I saw and all the different tools you need for dealing with specific watch repair problems um, the cool thing about this book too is that 
it'll get into the different types of pocket watches and watches. So the Walthams and all the different pieces of the, of the watch and the part numbers. So if you need to replace a part, you can just go to this book and reference the part, find out what it is. And, you know, Illinois, Springfield, Manhattan watches, different types of movements, all the lists. It also has the prices for everything because this was a catalog. This was the catalog back in the day. The section on tweezers, uh, you name it. So this didn't cost me much because it's, I think it was reprinted in China. So it's, now it says distributed by Guyan Books PVT Limited, right? And this was, if you look, it says email books at guyanbooks.com. And that's books at G-Y-A-N-B-O-O-K-S dot com or www.guyan, G-Y-A-N, so that's Gulf Yankee uh, uh, Alpha November Books, Bravo Oscar Oscar Kilo Sierra dot com. So go to that website, you'll find this book. It says it's 105 bucks US, but I bought this thing for like probably 50 bucks. I'm not sure what it was, but like 50 bucks and what it is is, is it's a reprint of the original vintage um, catalog but I find that this catalog is is very useful so in summary let me summarize here if you are starting watch repair and you actually have a lathe and you want to be able to use it right which is if you have a lathe and you don't want to use it then all it's used is to keep your 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 door open in the summertime to let all the cool air come in that's what the laser are used for if you don't want to use them. So, um, but if you want to use the lathe and you want to watch repair watches, um, you need to buy this book, Watch Repairs Manual. That's book number one. You buy this book, you got 90 percent of what you'll ever need to to fix a watch in this book. So this is the Fried book or Fred book or whatever F R I E D Henry Fried. This is what you need, 90% uh, the specific stuff on adjusting watches and everything else. You probably, if you're going to get into adjusting watches, let me reach back here, see if I can find it. Then Practical Watch Adjusting by DeCarl is the next book you buy, and that gets you into the, into specifics about how to get that watch keeping perfect time. And if you can fix a watch and it's vintage, but it's not keeping perfect time, it's still good because it works. It's 150 years old and it runs. Um, but if you want to wear it, uh, walk around with it, you want it to keep time. So you want to basically have near zero beat error and you want it to have an amplitude of 100 and, or 250 plus, uh, which is pretty good. And, and, and you want it to uh, be within plus or minus 10 seconds a day maybe, plus or minus 5 seconds a day if you're really good. Uh, maybe lower in five positions. So you want to get into practical watch adjustment um, and figure out how to do that. Um, and you might want to buy some software to adjust that watch as well. So just look up watch timing software and you'll find some pretty good software out there. Um, so that's that. Um, and then, as I said before, if you want to do lathe work, which I do, I basically cut pivots and make stems and stuff like that on a lathe. Then let's see if I can get this thing to there we go. Modern Watchmakers Lathe and How to Use It. That's the book you buy. Um, so what I'm telling you here is that all you need to do is buy three books and you're good to go. So I bought 20. But let me pause here. Let me do the dramatic pause. I bought 20 books. So did I do the right thing? Or did I just do a thing? Punk. That was almost an impersonation there. So, so you think I got six lathes or seven lathes? Do you feel lucky, punk? Anyway, it's my bad attempt at impersonating uh, somebody that you might know. These are the three books you need to buy. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I did it because I ended up buying 20. I'm just telling you, you, you only need to buy pretty much three books and you're good to go on, in watchmaking. So thanks a lot for watching the video. If you have any recommendations for further videos, uh, I know I had some videos where the audio was really crappy. Hopefully the audio is good in this video. Uh, the graphics are sort of okay. Um, my background is kind of shitty because I got some old vintage watchmaking tools sitting there in the background. So you're probably saying, what are those tools this man has in the background? So 
This is JD signing out. Um, thanks a lot, and um, I'll see you next time.